So, if you haven't seen the first video, go ahead and watch that before watching this one. This video is going to focus more on the probability mapping section of it and the uh, neural networks and deep neural networks. Now, every feature extraction method for uh, automated speech recognition has some type of probability uh, mapping model built into it where the highest most likely probable word that's spoken is selected and hidden Markov models are pretty much um, dominate the industry in this in this regards they're very simple easy to understand easy to implement and then uh, deep neural networks are much more complicated but uh, also much more accurate and those are in all of the industry leading software deep neural networks can be found in your smartphones and your computers for uh, Microsoft speech recognition uh, Siri uh, will be using deep neural networks and places like that so for hidden Markov modeling you use uh, there in almost every speech recognition system that used to be used if you're not using deep neural networks you're using um, hidden Markov modeling somewhere in there and hidden Markov modeling is even built into a lot of the uh, a lot of the deep neural networks as well from what I understand. Um, you have uh, hidden Markov modeling and handwriting recognition, facial, facial recognition, and artificial intelligence. Now just to understand hidden Markov modeling you have your set of observed states that uh, these we represented by x1, x2, x3 and then the, given your observed states, um, whatever the speech recognition signal is, it determines what the most likely, um, most likely selection was or the most likely word was, which would be indicated by the Y states. And there's um, other videos that go into uh, great detail on hidden Markov modeling. You spend a lot of time trying to understand hidden Markov modeling, so I'm not going to go into any one algorithm too deep in these videos. Um, as for deep neural networks, keeping on our same um, analogy of automotives, cars, uh, you have, it's kind of like the uh, jet of speech recognition here. It's extremely ro robust, very fast, it can be um, it can be very difficult to implement, but when done properly it offers the, the best uh, the best accuracy for speech recognition and we'll discuss that a little more in the next slides the reasons why but you have uh, high resources required for um, development of your deep neural networks it is very high uh, in popularity for it can be found throughout industry and is by far the best uh, method for speech recognition and it's very difficult to implement if you're trying to implement it from scratch and you don't have some type of op open source platform you're working from. It can obviously support multiple speakers, multiple languages, and a complete language model. And that being said, you can also switch between languages pretty easily without having to um, without having to change settings on something. You could have multiple languages operating on the same system, for example. Now, a uh, neural network, uh, the way it works, kind of like we were explaining with hidden Markov modeling, you have your input layer, and then all these hidden layers in between, you have features that are extracted out and that are deemed important. Um, so, images is probably the best way to um, realize this, but a deep neural network is just a neural network with three or more middle layers. So it just means that you can extract more important features and the more layers you have in the middle will give you be a higher accuracy. So you have some models for, um, for example, for image recognition and they will uh, be like eight layers deep in order to extract and each and every layer is extracting different sets of features. You might see lines, just uh, straight lines at one. You might see um, a more more curved lines and some colors and things and the, the model itself will extract what it thinks is important. You just give it an input and then train the model by telling it what that input was and then after you give it enough instances for images they'll train it with millions of images or for you'll do um, tens of thousands of instances of speech for training it for speech recognition but you don't do your uh, manual probability mapping like you would with uh, hidden Markov modeling um, for example so there's obvious advantages built in there so here's one uh, example for an image for deep neural networks 
uh, this is a common example I found in other videos. Um, so you have a deep neural network and they, after they had this uh, system recognizing images, they went ahead and asked the system to reverse the process. Rather than going from seeing an image and processing it and then spitting out what they think it is, they told it to give it an image of, for example, a cat. And then the uh, deep neural network went backwards and assembled the most important features for what looks like a cat here and obviously the face is what is identifying for a cat for this model and then they said a dumbbell to um, give an example of what a dumbbell looks like and then this came back with what looks like arms attached to these dumbbells and it thought that arms were important part of dumbbell so it's interesting to see what the computer picks up and something that humans would find extremely simple simple task for a human uh, not so simple to implement in a computer so in summary that was a lot of information I kind of made this uh, table here to sum it up and give a guide of what I think my opinions of what the best uh, system for a situation might look like and so just running through this real quick if you have a single speaker single language system with just under 50 words for example a, a small robot that you're trying to control with some uh, a few a few commands you could use some LPC or LPCC's with a hidden Markov modeling again that LPC and LPCC that's gonna be your feature extraction and the hidden Markov modeling is attached to any model with feature extraction whereas your deep neural networks don't need the feature extraction because they work better with raw features. They determine what's important to keep and get rid of rather than a human determining it with the algorithm. Um, and then we have your second instance here of, that I set an example of a system for single speaker, single language, and for 200 to 500 words, limited resources, limited development time and money, you might use a PLP or an MFCC. And again, these are probably some of the most popular um, models to use outside of uh, deep neural networks. They're very accurate and robust and can be found in even full speech systems. You can see hidden mo um, MFCCs down here in this other system where you'd have a full language model with a moderate hardware resource available. You could use an MFCC with a hidden Markov model. Now, um, coming down here, multiple sp multiple speakers with a single language, you can do an MFCC with hidden Markov model and attach a training algorithm to that. That will allow you to um, uh, to predict the variance in speech between different speakers with an accent or something of that nature. And then a RAS to PLP would be used for a more, more robust system where you have an abundant amount of time and money available to develop this system. And finally, uh, for the absolute best system, if you have the time, money, and know-how to get it done, deep neural networks can't be beat. And all the research right now uh, for the past five years or so has been going towards deep neural networks. So it is a very uh, hot area for um, research in speech recognition and also image recognition. Deep neural, neural networks themselves are very useful tools for um, any type of artificial intelligence, um, artificial intelligence programming. And hidden Markov modeling can be found throughout um, artificial intelligence applications as well. If you are interested in any of the resources that I used, here are some of the references of documentation that I researched in order to get all this information. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section. And if there's anyone else watching these videos that come behind and answer those questions, or if I get around to answering them, I will. But I won't lie, I'm normally not <laughs> I'm very good about getting back to people very quickly in the comment section. So. Thank you for watching and good luck on your next project.